This person says, there is no village everyone tells you about, just me and dad doing our best. Another girl says, if you want a village, go build yourself a village. It's just me and my husband and I and our two dogs and our newborn out here. The rest of our family lives in a different state. When we moved out here, I found some people at church. And when I found out I was pregnant, I really went to work to find people. And in the third trimester, I joined the local moms group because I needed mom friends. My husband doesn't really need people in person, just connects with them back home. But I need people who can go for coffee with, come over while I take a shower. I need people. So I went out and built my own freaking village. It's not a very big, some of my village is a lot more in the trenches with me than others. But we have one set of couple friends and I have a couple friends that are primarily my friends. And so that's my little village. I started serving people in the children's ministry. So I found people who love kids and could potentially babysit when I'm ready. I found a couple of high schoolers that are looking for cash that can shovel my driveway and mow my lawn or walk my dog and a kid who loves to clean so I can hire her to come to do dishes and laundry or whenever I feel overwhelmed. My village didn't fall in my lap and most of my friends pre-baby are not really in contact anymore because they're in different stages. I worked for my village and it's still growing and getting figured out, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it for me, for my marriage, for my husband, for my baby. Go out and make your own village and find your own people if you don't have one. Okay, I wanted to share those two different responses. And again, like these are anonymous. I don't know anything about these people personally, but I thought it was such interesting perspectives because the second one really makes a good point. You know, I think a lot of times we expect, or, you know, when we're pregnant, we hear people say all these things to us that are really exciting and can't wait for this. I'll be there for this. Let's go do this but it doesn't always happen that way. And so she made a really good point about you have to actively find your village. You have to actively go out there and make a plan for things because when it's like a new journey, it's new, you're new to motherhood, you're new space. People also want to give you your space. People also might want to respect your boundaries. So they don't know when to cross it. So sometimes being able to find your own boundaries find your own village, find your own group that you can rely on um, is huge. So I thought she said that so beautifully. And as me, like pregnant with my first baby right now is such like an encouraging thing. So I'm like, oh yeah, I need to go do that. I need to like find people that can be my village. I know I have people now that um, will be a part of it, but it's also important to find people, maybe new people, maybe realize that when you're in a new stage, your friendships might change a little bit or relationships you have might change a little bit and that's okay. So I thought that was a cool response. This girl says, everything doesn't always go the way you want, but as long as baby is healthy and happy and fed, everything's going to be okay. I like that. Can't always plan for everything. Sometimes things will just go crazy. This one, which I love, says it doesn't make you any less than to ask for help. This is huge. I think as women, a lot of times we don't want to ask for help. I'm speaking as like a people pleaser myself. It's really hard for me to ask for help. I kind of just do things on my own, but asking for help doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you less than. In fact, there are so many people out there that are wanting to help. And so I think it's an important lesson for all of us to get humbled a little bit and be like, you know what? We can ask for help. I, we can't do everything on our own. And there's so many people out there that are willing to help. So I think that's a good one. This person says, you are more capable than you believe and you can do it. I love that because it kind of goes into the episode I did with Whitney Copeland um, a couple of weeks back. She says, sometimes we limit ourselves because, you know, we, we tell ourselves we can only do a certain amount and not saying like, oh, put more on your plate if you're not super overworked. Um, no, it's not that at all. It's just saying like, yes, have boundaries where, where you need to have boundaries, but don't limit yourself in the ways of saying you can't do something because we are powerful. We are strong. And I think we can do almost anything we put our minds to. So I love that. This one says, everything is just a phase 
And just when you think you have the hang of it, it changes. Yep, we've heard we've heard that before. And I'm about to find out for myself. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Here's one that you will forever be behind on everything. The house is never clean. Dishes are never done. The laundry will always be piled high, even when you just did it. It just really gets overwhelming. There's not enough hours in the day, the way society operates. When you work a full-time job, you only have so many hours to do things and still actually spend time with your children. As a mother, you are the default parent. Your brain is always moving a million miles a minute, trying to remember every appointment um, and when you need diapers or no new clothes or things to send to daycare. And I agree, there's no village. I know I'd have more of one if I lived by family, but where we're currently at in life, it's just chugging along with periodic help here and there. All right. This one says, trust your gut. I can't tell how many times I've listened to those around me just for my gut to have been proven right. Your babies equal your gut. Mama knows best. I love that one. We just talked about that in a uh, real TikTok I did because I think so many times people tell you they know what's best for your baby. They will try to come in and say like, well, this happened to my child. Like you need to do this. Or if you go into a doctor, they might say like, oh, it's fine. But you have a gut feeling. Listen to your gut. Listen to those intuitions you have. And you know what's best. There's a lot of advice in here and a lot of hard lessons that people had to learn. If you're in our Facebook group, definitely check it out. There are so many great advice in here. I don't need to be super mom and try to do it all. I just need to do my best most days. Yes. Be patient and kind to yourself. Yes. I learned who my village was and it was not who I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I mean, that can definitely happen. I think it's so important to have these realizations and look back and see growth and progress and see how you've changed and see maybe how your village has changed and that you didn't necessarily see it that way and that's okay all right guys that's all I'm going to read this week there's so many like I said there's so many great lessons and advice and it's important to remember that everyone's is different so just because people here are saying this doesn't mean that's going to be the case for you or is the case for you. And you might be looking around and be like, I have a great village around me. This has been awesome. Or you might say like, I don't have any village around me and I've tried and I can't find one. So I think it's important that we remember each individual motherhood journey is different and it's unique. It's the, it's the constant like repetitiveness that I always say, but like do what's best for you and your family acknowledge that everyone's different. And so no one really truly knows you or your life or what works best for you. You know what's best. Mommy knows best, right? All right, guys, that's all I have for this week. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next week.